he's right on schedule. He'll know soon enough. Snake. I was part of the Army's Force 21 trials. Force 21? That's about tactical IT deployment, right? Any field experience? No, not really. So this is your first. Right. Go check the roof. I'll leave the first floor to you, okay? Understood. Somebody there. Raiden, what?
Hmm? Is there somebody there? There's somebody there. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Boris Larin. I am a developer of this mod. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what you just saw and you are as excited as I am about this project. Uh, last November, Metal Gear Solid 2 celebrated its 20th anniversary. The game and the whole franchise are amazing, it's a real cool classic. And uh, not that long ago, I was replaying uh, Metal Gear Solid games, and uh, while I was playing uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, I caught myself constantly thinking, what if this game had the same third-person camera, like in the Metal Gear Solid 3? If uh, MGS2 had the same camera, that would be so amazing. And actually, initially, Metal Gear Solid 3 also didn't have this uh, third-person camera mod. It was added on the... Uh, uh, in a special um, expanded edition of the game that, that was released a year later. And too bad that this new camera uh, was never backported into Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, I believe there were some opportunities to do that. Uh, there was a Metal Gear Solid HD collection released in 2011. Uh, back then, Bluepoint Games uh, remastered uh, and ported uh, Metal Gear Solid games to Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita. Metal Gear Solid uh, 2 and 3 uh, rely on a very similar codebase, so in my opinion that was the perfect time to backport uh, and incorporate some of the improvements from Metal Gear Solid 3 into Metal Gear Solid 2, but unfortunately uh, that never happened. In the end, uh, my desire to play Metal Gear Solid 2 with a normal third-person camera was so big that I decided to work on it by myself. So, uh, everything that you saw in this video was achieved through the process of reverse engineering. I didn't have any access to any source code or debug symbols. And uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 is uh, one of the few Metal Gear Solid games that were released for PC. And that's, well, that's uh, also helped me because I, uh, had, I had the opportunity to debug it more comfortably. And little by little, I was able to re-engineer many parts of the game, uh, its engine and its inner workings. And one of the first things I did was to re-engineer all about how the camera works in Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, the code to have a normal third-person camera was never present in the game. Uh, and um, to implement it, I had to replace all existing code uh, with my own code. I guess you notice that uh, the camera in my mod uh, looks and feels uh, exactly like the one in Metal Gear Solid 3. And it's intentional. Uh, I wanted to have the camera that will work exactly like the one in Metal Gear Solid 3. So after reverse engineering how the camera works in Metal Gear Solid 2, I started to reverse engineer how the camera works in Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear Solid 3 was never released for PC. Uh, originally it was released as PlayStation 2 exclusive. Uh, later it was released for other consoles. I was looking into a PlayStation 2 version and it turns out that IDA Pro, uh, that's my favorite tool for reverse engineering, it doesn't work well with PlayStation 2 executables. Uh, the problem is COP2 instructions. Uh, these type of instructions are not supported. And PlayStation 2 uh, uses these instructions for floating point calculations. And uh, as you can imagine, the camera code is all about floating point calculations. So I had to develop my own plugin that helps IDA to disassemble this type of instructions. And I'm going to release this plugin separately 
But in the end, it was easy for me to statically analyze the code of remaster for PlayStation Vita and um, debug PlayStation 2 build with the help of PC SX2 emulator. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 3 have a very similar codebase. Uh, so after working on Metal Gear Solid 2, I felt very comfortable working on uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. Some of the camera-related code is the same, like exactly the same in both games. But there are also some major changes. Uh, some of them are related to this newly introduced third-person camera. And after I reverse engineered all these changes, I was able to write the code that would uh, implement the same third-person camera if this code is injected into uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 to replace existing code of the camera. Uh, but to do this, do this, I also had to reverse engineer uh, how the game controls work and uh, change this code to make a use of gamepad's right stick because it's unused uh, in MGS2. And I also had to reverse engineer some other stuff like player's position and the player's direction. And after I found all the missing pieces, I wrote all the code and injected it into the game, I've got this. And you might think, uh, this is it, the project is complete. But uh, actually, this was just the beginning. Making such big changes to the game broke a lot of things in game, so I had to debug and fix all of them. One of the main problems is that uh, the new camera completely broke the game controls. It's hard to show on video, but I will try. Here you can see how I move the player by pressing up. Then I switch the direction of the camera. If I press up now, the player should go to where we came from, but it goes in the wrong direction. Uh, the game uses a fixed coordinate system for player movement, and it doesn't take direction of the camera into consideration. Uh, this was hard to fix due to the way how the game is written. I was able to find the generic way to fix this, instead of fixing like 50 different functions. Uh, but still, uh, it can cause some uh, problems in some rare special scenarios. So currently, a better testing is required, and that's why I can't release my mod right now. A couple of bugs I had were related to the way how I replaced existing cameras with my own camera. Because actually, um, uh, there might be um, multiple different cameras working uh, at the same time in the game. And uh, for example, like one camera is a uh, top view, uh, another one is a top view but more angled. Third one is um, uh, on the level of the player but from the side, and etc. All of this could be just different cameras which uh, switch when the player goes to the right spot. And they are fully controlled by the in-game uh, script language, which is called GCL. GCL scripts, uh, they set up, update uh, the position of the cameras they enable and disable them, multiple cameras might be active at the same time, and uh, when the new level is loaded, a new GCL script uh, gets launched and uh, they set up these new cameras. So I had to write uh, my code that would work around all of this and would make uh, my camera to look and feel the way it uh, should. I don't know if you noticed, but it's also possible to enable or disable my custom camera at any time, and everything will continue to work as intended. The next major issue I ran into was the missing collision detection for the camera, and uh, most of the game takes place indoors, so that's a big problem. Uh, here you can see some footage. A third-person camera without collision detection makes the game unplayable, and to be honest, initially I was not even sure that it's possible to implement the collision detection for the camera because uh, the camera in Metal Gear Solid 2 never had it in the first place and I reverse engineered how collision detection for the camera and collision detection in general works in Metal Gear Solid 3 and there are quite big changes in collision detection code between these two games. Collision detection code in Metal Gear Solid 2 is much simpler because of this I couldn't just adapt the code from Metal Gear Solid 3 but still, uh, somehow, through trial and error, I was uh, able to implement collision detection code for the camera. And it looks and feels uh, very nice. I'm very glad that everything worked out. Some of the problems, to be honest, were completely unexpected. And they took me much more work than I originally expected. 
For example, my modification accidentally broke some cutscenes. Some of them started to look very funny. And this happened because some cutscenes are implemented by emulation of button presses. Basically, when such cutscene starts, the script tells the game to, for example, walk forward until a wall is encountered and then go to the left. Uh, this would only work if the camera is pointed in the right direction when the cutscene starts. And because my model allows to change the direction of the camera, such cutscenes just stop to work properly. Cutscenes are very important for the game, so I've come up with a workaround. Uh, when such cutscene starts, I need to disable my third-person camera. I need to set up uh, the camera position and direction to the expected values. And later, when um, cutscene ends or player stops it from playing, I need to re-enable my third-person camera. The expected uh, camera data for cutscenes could be collected through normal gameplay with a regular camera. And I already implemented all the code and already collected this date for a number of cutscenes. But still, I need to finish the game a couple of more times to collect all this data. So this is another reason why I can't release my mod right now. Another unexpected problem is that at some levels, uh, GCL scripts hide some objects from the regular camera. And usually this is done for optimization reasons or because some objects are in the way of regular camera. I personally prefer to make all such objects visible for my custom camera. In the end, I want to say that my modification doesn't change any game resources, uh, all done by changing the game's code. I replace the functions of the game's engine with my own code, and I uh, write this code to work around all the problems uh, which may be caused by the in-game scripts. Projects like this, uh, they take a lot of time to complete, and um, I've been working on this project for all the holidays and some weekends that I had this year. In total, by this day, uh, it took me about four weeks to achieve what I have at this moment. I estimate my project to be like 80% uh, complete. Still, I need to finish the game uh, a couple of more times to find, debug and fix all remaining problems. I'm working on this project in my spare time and I plan to release it uh, before the end of this year maybe somewhere around of 20th anniversary of Metal Gear Solid 2 Subsistence Edition. And if you're excited about this project, please uh, leave the comment and uh, please help to spread the word about it so more people know about this project. Uh, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.